Hi, my name is Ron Lohman. I'm here with my colleague, Rich Collins. And today we're going to talk about AI compute needs. And so, Rich, over the last five years, we've seen uh, a ton of changes with respect to the type of math that's required um, because of AI. Um, what are the basic building blocks uh, required for this type of processing? And, and what do you see um, that, that your portfolios have to do? Right. Um, if you look at things, uh, you know, you, you know, multiple. <laughs> Uh, accumulators or max are, are kind of dominating the semiconductor landscape now. Uh, Tensor math has enabled computers to outpace human identification accuracy. So depending on the complexity required, this may be serviced by either dedicated DSPs or may require additional hardware acceleration. Um, if you look at that from a you know an implementation perspective, many processors are capable of executing single MAC instructions, but dot product style, uh, eight by 16 or 16 by 16 dual and quad Mac instructions, um, increased parallelism, and obviously the processing that's required to, to manage that. Um, these are executable in things that we've focused on in our latest ARC processors, where we've combined both risk and DSP processing into a single architecture. Okay, and you know, Synopsys does have a portfolio of foundation IP uh, building blocks like floating point dot product hardware, um, and customers use those for our accelerators. Um, but mm -hmm. from an ARC portfolio perspective, um, how has the, the architecture changed specifically um, beyond the MAC parallelism? Um, and what does a, an ARC portfolio um, provide in addition to uh, what a build your own may, may give you? Right. So, so as I mentioned, you know, standard risk architectures have added this combination of multiply MAC operations to increase the number of MACs that can be executed per cycle. Um, but if you look at it in terms of the workloads that are being uh, demanded, more work per cycle is a key differentiation that we try to address in the ARC portfolio. So combining this risk plus DSP into a single programmable um, processor uh, can address a pretty broad range of, of ma uh, machine learning applications and algorithms. And with AI math basically being computed in every new type of SOC uh, across the board from Synopsys' perspective, um, we see a lot of 32-bit floating point, 16-bit, 8-bit. Um, what do you foresee in the future uh, that processors really have to handle with respect to AI? Yeah, I, I think it's it's real clear that that neural frameworks like TensorFlow um, and their and their support for APIC quantization have really standardized these architectures, um, especially for real time applications. Um, and and to that end, the eight the int eight max are are really becoming the the most prevalent architectural choice across the board. Um, so now, when you look at architectural comparisons, um, it, it's there's more a uh, more level playing field. There's more of an apples to apples comparison. You can look at things like inferences per second if you're talking about performance, or you can look at inferences per joule if you're talking about power analysis. Um, we will probably see um, uh, a migration to smaller architectures such as Orbit, but at least for now, int eight is is very much prevalent. So that's kind of on the you know on the processing side. Um, overall, uh, we're seeing that future architectures are going to adapt um, new activation features, uh, things like non-linearity functionality and uh, a graph like MobileNet V3, or new types of neural networks altogether. And one in particular that we're starting to see a lot of traction is this idea of transformers, uh, deep learning models that are, are simpler in structure and easier to train. Um, they're largely used in, in natural language processing today but there is a migration to push this into the embedded edge devices and be able to broaden the number of domains that can be supported like vision processing. Yeah, and clearly those models such as transformers are getting more and more complex every day. Um, so is there anything else that, that you wanted to mention from Synopsys and the portfolio of solutions they have for AI um, today? Um, just in general, uh, um, our focus is to try and provide kind of a seamless uh, solution, uh, you know, a common SDK, for instance, that can cover the applications from the lowest end that would use a, an ARC uh, EM type cla uh, class of core, all the way up to what we have for our dedicated embedded vision processors and, and neural um, processing units that can, that can manage some of the more complex um, machine learning types of tasks. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time and your expertise today. And if you want to learn more, you can go to synopsis.com. Thank you.